Do you think SVS has reached the pinnacle with these towers? Today we're going to be doing the full review of the SVS Prime Pinnacle Towers. I'm Barrett, this is Speca Tech, and welcome to the channel. I recently switched from the Klipsch RP lineup of speakers to the SVS Ultra and SVS Prime Pinnacle speakers. In today's review, I will interject some comparisons between the SVS Prime Pinnacle speakers and my Klipsch RP8000Fs that I had before them. If you have been waiting for the SVS Prime Pinnacle and the SVS Ultra comparison, I will be doing that very shortly, but that won't be today's video. Make sure to stay tuned on the channel. I recently did drop the SVS Ultra review where I did interject some comparisons with the RP8000Fs and I did tell you which one I prefer. I'll link that video in the top right hand corner if you want to go watch that one after this video. So in today's review, I will answer the exact same question, whether or not I prefer the Klipsch RP8000F or the SVS Prime Pinnacle speaker. I will leave links for the SVS as well as the clip speakers down in the description below. If you guys do decide to buy anything that I talk about on my channel, please consider using my links. Since I am an affiliate, it does help out the channel a little bit and it really doesn't cost you guys anything. Now that I got the shameless plug out of the way, you guys know I don't like wasting your time. So let's get straight into this review. Today we're going to be discussing the price, the specs, the design and build quality, as well as the performance and sound quality, and then I'll give my final thoughts at the end. I will be throwing a demo in there as well, and I will also be telling you which one I prefer, the Klipsch RP8000F or the SVS Prime Pinnacle. Let's kick things off with the price. The Prime Pinnacles are currently priced at $1,600 US dollars for the pair at the time of this review. That price is for the black ash color, which is the one I have here. If you want the piano gloss black, that'll cost an extra $100 US dollars per speaker for a total of $1,800 US dollars. You do actually get quite a bit of speaker here for the $1,600 price tag, uh, but before we get into that, if you guys are into audio and home theater, please consider subscribing. And if you subscribe, you might as well tick the bell icon so you can be notified about all the reviews I have coming. I will be doing one on the all carbon fiber 24 inch Harbottle Audio subwoofer you won't want to miss that one and please take a second now just to click that like button down below I would greatly appreciate it let's get back to the specs and what you get for sixteen hundred or eighteen hundred dollars respectively these speakers are a ported enclosure with three two inch rear firing ports and measure forty one point one inches high eight inches wide and thirteen point nine inches deep this includes the grill the feet and the binding posts and they weigh in at fifty seven pounds each each speaker is equipped with an SVS first which is a five and a quarter inch woven fiber mid-range driver and a one inch aluminum dome tweeter. This is the exact same tweeter that's used in the Ultra Tower. And then you have three six and a half inch polypropylene base drivers with a long stroke motor and suspension. They are a three way design with a frequency response of 29 Hertz to 25 kilohertz, a nominal impedance of eight ohms and a sensitivity of 88 dB at 2.83 volts at one meter. They are rated for 20 to 300 Watts and for the driver baskets, excluding the tweeter, of course, they went with a cast ABS fiberglass composite material. The package actually includes floor spikes and rubber feet, which is great because it depends on what you're putting these speakers on and what your preference is. SVS separated the mid-range enclosure from the rest of the speaker, and each base driver has its own enclosure and port as well. They also chamfered the front baffle and flush mounted the drivers to reduce edge diffraction and help improve on-axis high frequency response. It's little touches like these that show a lot of care went into the design of these speakers. And speaking of design, let's see how well SVS did with the design as well as the build quality. When you're talking about the design of the SVS Ultra Tower, SVS actually went out on a bit of a limb and made it a trapezoid shape, which people either love or hate. They didn't do anything as daring here with the SVS Prime Pinnacle Tower. It is a traditional rectangular shaped speaker, which makes it a little less exciting. This is definitely the safer route and it's going to be accepted by a broader audience and it isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just a little less daring. I do like the subtle design touches like the rounded top corners and the chamfered front baffle. Of course you can't mistake the front facing tweeter with any other speaker, it is the signature SVS tweeter and it does have a nice aesthetic appeal. The woven fiber mid-range has a nice look as well, I prefer those materials over the somewhat generic polypropylene base drivers. All in all, this is a nice looking speaker. There's nothing really out of the ordinary here, but it does look good and of good quality. The black ash finish does seem to be of good quality and does have a bit of texture to it. The only reason I chose the black ash over the piano gloss black is because these were on sale locally for a great price. If I were to buy new, I would have gotten the gloss black. That finish really does up the aesthetic appeal and really does look gorgeous, similar to the SVS Ultra Towers. Build quality also does seem quite good here. The cabinet is a sturdy, well-built box with some great internal bracing. The binding posts are a very generic standard post, which do the job, but are nothing special or flashy. I would have liked to have seen some magnetic grills here as opposed to the pin and grommet style grill, but the grill again seems well built enough and does look good. 
With the SVS Ultras, I had an issue with two of the grills being curved and they didn't want to insert into their grommets. I did not have the same problem with the Pinnacle grills. They were straight out of the box and I was able to put them on without any issues. To sum it all up, you aren't getting anything earth shattering here, but you are getting a well-built, good looking speaker for the price. And if you opt for the gloss black, I do feel in my opinion that you're getting a much nicer looking speaker. For a speaker, the looks aren't the most important anyway, it's how they sound. So how do the SVS Prime Pinnacle sound? Well, I did do a variety of listening with different equipment just to get a general idea of the characteristics of the speaker in my room. So I listened to them hooked up to my Tone Winner AD5180 amplifier with the signal coming from my Denon AVRX4400. I also listened to them connected to the Tone Winner AD5180 with the signal coming from the Orchard Audio Pecan Pie DAC, which is a great little DAC by the way, which I did a review on recently. I'll link that video in the top right hand corner if you guys are interested in a fantastic sounding DAC. And lastly, I listened to the Prime Pinnacle Towers hooked up to the Orchard Audio Stark Rims in monoblock amplifiers with the signal coming from the Orchard Audio Pecan Pie DAC. I also did play with the toe-in angle as well as the distance from the wall in an attempt to get the best sound out of these speakers that I could in my room. For music listening, I did play these in two-channel music mode only, with no subwoofers enabled and no Odyssey enabled. Obviously, for gaming and movies, I was listening to these with the surround sound mode enabled. I will be playing a demo here in a bit so that you can hear these speakers with a variety of music as well. So let me start with a simple statement. These speakers do sound good. I immediately liked how they sounded and their presence. My initial impression of the SVS Prime Pinnacle Tower versus the Klipsch RP8000Fs was that their highs were a little bit more laid back, yet they were still quite clear. They had a really good 3D sound stage, but at the same time weren't quite as forward as the Klipsch RP8000Fs either. The SVS Prime Pinnacles also seem to have a better vertical image, if that makes sense. The Klipsch RP8000Fs are a more uh, narrow dispersion speaker, and I believe that this also applies to their vertical dispersion, whereas the SVS Prime Pinnacles do have a wider dispersion, so I think this contributes to why they sound like they're a little bit higher up in the room, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing. I did find it easier to trick my ears into thinking the sound was coming from my TV, because I do have my TV raised up quite a bit to uh, accommodate the SVS Ultra Tower, which is quite tall. And sometimes if I focus, I can tell that the sound is coming from below the TV with the Klipsch RP8000Fs. With the SVS Prime Pinnacles, it was so much easier for me to trick my ears into hearing the sound coming from the TV. So this is an important note for those of you that may have your TV mounted higher up. These speakers do really well with a vertical soundstage. The Prime Pinnacles also do have a better off-axis listening, and again, this is because of their wider dispersion versus the narrower dispersion of the Klipsch. So you are able to break that center imaging a little bit easier with the Klipsch versus the Prime Pinnacles here. All that being said, no speaker is perfect, so I did feel that the Klipsch had a better bass response versus the Prime Pinnacles, which actually kind of surprised me because the Prime Pinnacles do have uh, three six and a half inch bass drivers. I was expecting them to handle bass a little bit better than the Klipsch, but it was actually the opposite. Klipsch seemed to handle it just a little bit better. But what the Pinnacles did have in bass was very tight, controlled, and did sound good. That being said, my room is 21 feet long by 17 feet wide with eight foot high ceilings and it is open to the rest of the house because it is a four level split design and it is the back wall that is open to the rest of the house. So it does take a little bit more to get a convincing base response in such a large area. So I do feel that the SVS Prime Pinnacles would perform much better in a small or medium sized room and you'd get a much more convincing base response. So I just wanted to include that to be fair. I also want to point out that I am a base head so I do like a little bit more heavy handed bass and that isn't everybody's preference. So if you do like tight controlled bass, don't take what I'm saying here wrong with the Prime Pinnacles. They still do have good bass. I just felt that the Klipsch had a little bit better bass, at least for my preference. Okay, so we've come to the demo part of the video and as always, this comes with a disclaimer. The recording equipment that I am using as well as your device has a major part in how this is going to sound to you. It is not an accurate representation of what the speaker sounded like in my room. But I know that there is a large part of the audience that likes to hear demos, so let's do it.
I hope you guys enjoyed those demos. I did try to provide a wide variety of music for you guys, so I hope you enjoyed them. But let's get back to the performance of the Prime Pinnacles. Let's back up a little bit here to the beginning again. When I first plugged in the Prime Pinnacles, I also noticed immediately that they are much more quiet, given the same level setting I was using with the Klipsch in the AVR. The Klipsch are a more sensitive speaker, and it is quite noticeable here. Now, of course, you can negate all that by adjusting the levels in your AVR to gain match these speakers at your main listening position. But it is still worth pointing out that the Klipsch are more sensitive and will be easier to drive to higher volumes. The Prime Pinnacles do provide a great experience in both movies and music, and really are a great all-around speaker with a wide dispersion and great image that can plant the vocals dead center while other sounds do sound like they're coming from other parts of the room. So which speaker did I prefer over the other? Well, we're going to get to that in my final thoughts. So first, let's sum up the Prime Pinnacles and interject some more comparisons with the Klipsch RP8000Fs. So let's sum up the top end first. The SVS Prime Pinnacles do have a clear, yet more laid-back performance in their top end. The Klipsch are a little bit more forward, and some people consider them a little bit more bright, even though they have made leaps and bounds in this department in the recent years. When it comes to mid-range, the SVS Prime Pinnacles are a three-way design with a dedicated mid-range driver, so I did find that their mid-range was a little bit more rich and a little bit more full, but don't get me wrong here, the Klipsch RP8000Fs still do have a good mid-range, and they are rich and full, just not quite to the level of the SVS Prime Pinnacle. Personally, I feel that with the bass, there was the biggest difference. The SVS Prime Pinnacles do have good bass. It is tight, it is clear, but it didn't quite have the heavy handedness that I was used to with the Klipsch RP8000Fs, and I actually do prefer that heavy handed bass, like I stated previously. Both of these speakers perform very well for music and movies, and give you a good listening experience, especially considering their price point. So before I tell you guys if I prefer the Prime Pinnacles or the Klipsch RP8000Fs, let me just state that I am not comparing brands. I am not comparing SVS versus Klipsch and saying one brand is better than the other brand. I am merely comparing these two models and which ones I preferred to my ears and for my room. So please don't go to the comments and start bashing one brand versus the other. But that being said, I do want to hear from you. So do drop your comments down below. Maybe you've done the same comparison before and maybe you found the same thing or maybe you found it different. I do want to hear those comments down below, but let's keep it friendly. I do do my best not to be brand loyal. I try to let the product speak for itself, regardless of what brand it is, as I tried to do when I compared the SVS Ultra to the Klipsch RP8000Fs. So in this case, guys, the SVS Prime Pinnacles are a very worthy adversary, but if you put two speakers in front of me, the Prime Pinnacles and the RP8000Fs, and I'm only allowed to keep one, I'm not allowed to keep both, of course, I would have to go with the Klipsch RP8000Fs. They are both a great speaker. I really did like them both but there was a slight preference for me for the Klipsch in the way they sound, most likely because of the bass. They do have a good mid-range and they do have a great top end, uh, but when it comes to mid-range, the SVS Prime Pinnacle were a little bit better. They did have a great top end as well and it was a little bit more laid back. I actually do really enjoy the sound of both of these speakers, but slightly do prefer the Klipsch RP8000Fs if I have to choose one and I'm making myself choose one. With all that in mind, of course, sound is subjective, guys. Everybody has different preferences, different ears, and different rooms. So I'm sure there are those of you out there that would prefer the SVS Prime Pinnacles over the Klipsch RP8000Fs. I am 100% on board with that. And just in my case, I prefer the RP8000Fs in this room. Maybe if we had put them in different rooms, I may have even preferred the SVS Prime Pinnacle because it was close, but I did like the Klipsch in the end. And of course, guys, I was trying to give you an honest depiction of what I was hearing in my room. I tried to listen to them both with no bias, just listen to them for what I preferred in sound quality and sound quality only. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And if you are into audio and home theater, please consider subscribing. And if you subscribe, you might as well tick the bell icons. So you can be notified about the reviews I have coming. I will be doing the SVS Ultra versus the SVS Prime Pinnacle and letting you guys know the differences there. So make sure you stay tuned on the channel for that. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, consider sharing it. And please just take one second to click that like button down below. I would really appreciate it. And remember guys, be good to each other, enjoy your systems, You'll catch me in the next video. Cheers.